Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.4.1 has been out a couple days and there's even more bug fixes and updates to talk about since the iOS 17.4.1 is out. What's new video. We'll talk about my experience since I've been using it on the 15 pro max and iPad pro. And we'll talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video. There's over 12,000 votes and 229 comments. I've read every single comment to determine what the overall experience is like, where we'll talk about bug fixes and more a little bit later in the video and also read some of your comments toward the end of the video. But first, let's talk about some of the latest Apple news with iOS 18 first. I talked this past week how Apple had actually been reaching out to Google about using its generative AI platform, Gemini, and they also spoke to OpenAI about this. Now we're hearing that Apple's working with Baidu for AI as well. So based on reports, it seems Apple may be doing this due to regulations in different countries, such as China for generative AI approval and other things as well. So maybe we'll see different partnerships just using their models, but not necessarily the way they do things or their platform. So there could be something to do with maybe patents or anything else. I don't think Apple will actually use their servers or anything like that, but we'll have to wait and see. Also, you may have already heard the big story this past week is that Apple is being sued by the Department of Justice over what they say is illegal monopolies. While some have considered Apple to be anti-competitive, there's some odd things in the statement saying that iPhone is the reason the Amazon Fire Phone failed, or among other claims such as CarPlay being anti-competitive, even though we have Android Auto. Apple actually responded to this, saying that they innovate every day, and they continue to sort of make the best products they can. So we'll have to wait and see what actually comes of this. We don't really know, but this is going to be a long lawsuit. They did this with Microsoft years ago, and they've already still been looking into Google. Apple's own silicon and things such as the iPhone, iPad, and Mac has been incredible. It brings great performance, great battery life, and things such as Macs. However, there's a new vulnerability that can be exploited to take advantage of the encryption keys on the Mac to possibly read its data. It's not exactly straightforward, but Apple is unable to patch this due to the current architecture of the Apple Silicon chips. This is according to a report on Ars Technica and more specifically to the M1 and M2 chipset. And I'm sure Apple's already working on a patch for the Mac. And if they can't patch it, maybe we'll hear some sort of notification from them, but they so far haven't actually commented on it. So maybe that's why we haven't had an update for Mac this week. We don't really know. Now, when it comes to games on your iPhone, well, Call of Duty Warzone Mobile is now available. So those of you that have been waiting for this, it's now available. Looks like it has a 4.4 rating. And so if you want to check it out, you can check it out for free now. Now, there's a couple things I wanted to mention with iOS 17.4.1 as far as new features, changes, and updates. The first thing is when you installed this, there was a bit of confusion. You'll see that we have different sizes for this depending on how you install it. At first, you could only get it with the betas turned on, and then you would have a very large large file size of about six to seven gigabytes. So 6.46 for me. However, once it was available, you would turn the betas off and you would have a smaller 406 megabyte update or 350 to 450 or so. And so this update is the same. It's a Delta update, which means it sort of installs on top of the existing update. The other one is sort of a full reinstall of it. So either one should be the exact same with the same build numbers, but it looks like that's just something they did by mistake. I'm not sure why they pushed it out in the beta field as well here when you had that enabled. So maybe we'll see that fixed in the future update, but it was odd that they did that. And some people are still seeing that. So either way, you should have the same update with the same features and bug fixes. Now, one thing they have fixed has to do with iPads. This was actually identified by a user I mentioned before, where if you have an iPad and you're using it to scan QR codes, it wouldn't work on certain iPads with iPad OS 17.4. It wouldn't work on iPad seventh generation, sixth generation, the 12.9 inch second generation or iPad pro 10.5 inch that's been patched in iOS 17.4.1. So if you use that, whether that's in a factory or a workplace or at home, that will now work with 17.4.1. So at least they gave us that information. Also, another odd thing with this update is if we go to our other updates here, where the release notes are, well, there are no release notes and they actually made a mistake here where they said iPadOS 17.4.1 is releasing on March 26th. Now, maybe that's why we waited so long for 17.4.1 as it seems we may not be getting new iPads this week. Initially, many people said it was coming out on the 26th and then Mark Gurman said it's not coming out on the 26th. Maybe it will be in April or some other time frame. So he's long said it would be in March or April, and it's just odd that Apple has the wrong date here, but no release notes or anything. They didn't give a lot of bug fix information other than that paper that they published that I just showed you. So it's a little odd they had that. 
as far as security updates, they still have not updated this as well, where it says iOS 17.4.1 and iPadOS 17.4.1 details coming soon. So hopefully they update this soon, but maybe they're waiting for the watchOS update or macOS update, maybe to do with that chipset or something else that they were able to patch. So we don't really know why they haven't updated this yet, but so far they haven't. Now this week we also got an AirTag firmware update and they haven't updated it on their website yet, but it seems to have pushed out to most AirTags already. There's nothing you can do to really encourage it to update on its own. However, Apple made a mistake and accidentally pushed them out all at once instead of over time. Typically AirTag updates go out over the period of about a month or so. And you can see here posted on Twitter by iSoftware updates that they accidentally had the wrong dates for the year 24, not 2024. So it just pushed it all out. And then Aaron P613 later confirmed that they've actually patched this and sort of it will roll out if you don't have it already. So it's kind of an odd thing. They made some mistakes there, not just with the release dates with iPad OS, but with this as well. Now, as far as other things we're waiting for this week, well, this coming week, we could see WWDC 2024 updates. So we could see when we're actually going to get WWDC 2024. And typically Apple will share that toward the end of the month. In fact, last year they shared it on March 29th, that it would be held in June. That's usually when we have it is within June and we'll get iOS 18 beta one and others at that same time frame. Now, also you'll be able to see that in the dev app. So if you have the developer app, you'll see WWDC here and you'll see this updated with the dates for 2024. Then they'll send out invites to the media and others later on, usually around April or so. Now, as far as other updates, well, we're still waiting for iOS 17.5 betas, and I would expect those probably as soon as this coming week. I suspected last week that the reason we hadn't seen them yet is because they had to hurry up and get iOS 17.4 out to comply with the laws in the EU for sideloading. Because they weren't able to do that in the time frame they wanted, they pushed it out in early March, and then they're probably waiting for the betas to line up to sort of the same release schedule we had last year, which means iOS 16.4 was on March 27th, and then they released iOS 16.5 beta one on March 28th. So I would expect probably around Tuesday or Wednesday of this year, we'll see some sort of iOS 17.5 beta one update. And to go along with those updates, we're waiting for iOS 18, of course, and that's where we'll see the major feature updates. While I do suspect some changes with iOS 17.5, we'll talk about in a moment. We know iOS 18 is said to feature things such as an updated freeform app, hearing aid mode, possibly for AirPods, as well as new accessibility features, new AI updates, RCS messaging, possible redesigns and more. So we won't know about that until later, but it seems Apple's probably focused on that update. However, with iOS 17.5, we do expect some features, probably some that they removed from 17.4. Apple's already announced that true side loading is actually coming to iOS 17.5 or maybe a later version this spring. And if we go to the website there in Apple's developer website, this is sort of real side loading where an app developer can load load a different app from a website. So instead of having to have a third party app store, they can load it from a website as well. That's coming later this spring, according to Apple. So that's the first thing we expect with iOS 17.5. Also maybe some changes such as the podcast widget where we had it before. So if we add that earlier betas of iOS 17.4 had the podcast widget changed to the background of whatever the podcast itself was sort of to match the color like music does. So that's something that we could see. Also, there were mentions of homo OS they removed, they changed the navigation bar on Safari, and also they had a stopwatch live activity that they since removed. That's something I would love to see return where you'd slide home and it would go to the dynamic island. So all of those things are expected, hopefully in the future updates, as well as Apple Music SharePlay that worked with HomePod and Apple TV as well. So we could wait and see for those. We don't really know for sure, but I would expect something along those lines. Now, as far as bug fixes this week, other than what I've already mentioned, the alarm not going off bug seems to have been fixed. So if you have an alarm that was set, sometimes it wasn't actually alarming and of course not waking you up in the morning. That seems to be fixed along with the notifications where they're no longer squared off for me. So you'll see they're nice and smooth as we scroll up. Nothing's just jumping in and they're not squared off. Oftentimes they would sort of square off and then go back to normal. That seems to be fixed for me. AirPods seem to be connecting very quickly and working well. Many people are reporting that not only do they connect well, but they also stay connected. They're not having dropouts or any interruptions in audio. They seem to be 
a little bit better this time around or much better for some people. As far as airdrop goes, that seems to be working much better for me. I know some people complained of it. It worked fine for me, but sometimes it was a little bit slow, but if we go to airdrop and maybe we'll airdrop to this iPhone 15 pro max, we'll give it a second here. And there we go airdrop and there it is. So it's working nice and fast as far as that goes. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is standby mode. Standby mode seems to be fixed as far as being able to adjust colors, sort of. So let me show you what I mean. Now, if we use this battery pack to connect standby mode, we'll bring it up here. There we go. Give it a second and it connects and now we're in standby. There's an issue with this, but it also is fixed in some other ways. You can now adjust the colors on things. So if you press and hold, of course, you can adjust your widgets or whatever else you'd like. However, we'll go back out. If we go over to maybe the clock here and press and hold, once you've adjusted the color on it once, it doesn't seem to let you edit it again. That's actually a bug. So it will let me adjust the color, but now I can't actually go back into it and edit it. If I tap on it, it just doesn't do anything. And this is actually a bug that's still there. So there are bugs that still remain as I'm showing you here. However, the volume slider bug is still there for some people, not for others. So not sure why that's not fixed. Also, I've heard a couple people say the files app is very unreliable. It's actually been fine for me going into files. So if we go and share this photo I took, some people are saying that it sort of just crashes and doesn't work properly, whether that's airdropping it or something else. So if I airdrop it over to the iPad, it seems to work okay for me. It airdrops just fine and there it is. So it's not a problem for me, but some people are saying files has some issues. Also, people say that connection overall has been spotty. However, there's been a lot of outages around the United States anyway over the past week or so. Some people were having issues with T-Mobile, others with Verizon, others with AT&T. So I think that's more related to your carrier and maybe cell towers nearby than with Apple. I've actually had pretty good signal. I did have some issues when they had an outage as well. However, there's one other bug that still remains and that's when you scroll through video. So if we go into photos and within a video, you'll see here's one I took for my comparison with the S24 Ultra. If I scroll back and forth, you can see how choppy it is in this video, but if I let it play, it's nice and smooth. But if I scroll, it just sort of jumps all over the place. Many people have been complaining about that as well. The wallpaper dimming bug is still there for me as well. It's very minor, but it's there. If you watch sort of the orange area here, it will desaturate as I swipe the notifications off. So still some odd bugs. It seems there's less bugs, but there's still bugs there. As far as camera improvements, well, I don't think there's anything major here. And I do have a few photos I took earlier on, but you'll see if I snap a photo, it's nice and fast. And here's a few photos I took earlier and you can see what they look like here. I think the camera is doing a great job. I don't think they've changed much there and I haven't had any bugs with it or heard any reports of it as well. When it comes to performance, many people, in fact, most people say it's very fast and smooth. Now that could change over time, but many people are saying that it's faster than before, smoother than before. So if you're going into apps, whether that's Minecraft or Genshin Impact, or just maybe going into music and opening it up, scrolling, it's nice and fast. We'll go into home here, wait for it to load. And it seems to be nice and fast as you would expect. Some people have also said that ProMotion is very smooth, but feels a little bit different. Seems very smooth to me, but some people have reported it's a little bit different this time around. Just depends who you ask. As far as the overall heat, well, initially it was a little bit warm. Of course, after you install an update, it always will be. But for the most part, it's staying much cooler for most people, even when doing intensive tasks or charging where it's expected to heat up a little bit. So that's a good sign. There is still time for it to process in the background after the first couple of days. But let's go ahead and take a look at the thermals as it's nice and cool for the most part. It's a little bit warm, but that's normal when I've left the screen on this amount of time, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here's one with the same version of 15 pro max at idle. And you'll see we're at about 31 degrees Celsius on the 15 pro max I've been using. And we're at about 27 and a half degrees Celsius on the one that's sitting idle. And again, on the one I've been using, we're at about 92 degrees Fahrenheit and the one that's idle, we're at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, both are doing well. It will heat up a little bit as you leave it on a long time at different brightness levels and other things, but it seems to be working as you would expect. And most people say it's running much cooler. Now, again, it can take a few days for it to sort of settle down and that to sort of stabilize, but in general, it seems to be pretty good. As far as the overall benchmarks, if we go over and take a look here with Geekbench 6, I had 2,904 for single core, 7,117 for multi-core.
I did run it again and it got a little bit lower results as typically once you run it once it starts to heat up a little bit and you'll see it went down a little bit, but it's well within range as far as single core and multi-core. It can vary greatly. And of course, after it's fully done optimizing over the next week or so next weekend, we'll probably see different results. Now, as far as the overall battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that on this device. You may have seen with the what's new video with iOS 17.4.1 is out. What's new. If we go into battery health, I'm down to 99% with 140 cycles. Now you can see the overall stats here on the left with coconut battery as well, but this gives you an idea. This is completely normal. Some people will see it drop maybe as soon as 30 cycles. Some people will see it not drop from hundred percent to 99, even later. It just depends on your overall battery size, the capacity. There's a little bit of extra battery as it's chemical. It's not perfect for every single one. In theory, it could drop after about 25 to 50 cycles, about 1%. But after a thousand cycles, Apple says you should have about 80% in the 15 series phones and about 500 cycles. You'd have 80% in all the other phones. As far as overall battery life, well, it varies greatly depending on the day, but today I had only two hours and 44 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 31 minutes of screen idle time. And I used about 75 or 80% of my battery. I'm down to 32%. And the only time it's been on the charger all day is when I actually just placed it here in this video. So it's not great, but for someone else, it's been great. So let's go ahead and take a look as it seems they've fixed it for most people. And thanks to Connor for sending this in. And this is on a 15 pro max with 96% battery health. He has four hours and 17 minutes of screen active time at two hours and 14 minutes of screen idle time and is left with 42%. So this has actually been pretty good for him. Typically he'll get about the same. It seems like it's going to improve over time for many people, but it will take probably at least three, four or five days to know hundred percent for sure if it's better or worse as iOS 17 actually started to degrade over a week or two. So we'll have to wait and see if it actually improves so far though, it looks for most people they've fixed it. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.4.1, well, if you have issues with iOS 17.4, this seems to fix most of it. As I said before, it looks like Apple finally fixed a bunch of issues. However, if you're on iOS 17.3.1 or older and you want to hold out, you can, but there are major security updates in this that I'd update for if it's not an issue for you. Otherwise, let's wait and see after a week or so and see what it's like. As far as what you had to say, let's take a look at some of the comments. Kevin Pansky 7347 said 17.4.1 fixed my battery drain issue. 14 Pro Max on T-Mobile USA Wi-Fi bug is still there. However, Unibrione 7913 said seems like the battery drain issue has been fixed on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Gonna give it a day or two more to confirm. Braggist Mold 5 said had a lot of bugs 17.4, especially with CarPlay notes, maps, Apple Music, stuttering in general. Battery life was decent. 17.4.1 is a lot better so far. Haven't had any problems. I'd love to know what device you're using as well. Isaac man, 1870 said iOS 17.4.1 on my iPhone 13 pro max. My experience so far is way better than with iOS 17.4, especially when it comes to battery and heat. Calvin H four, six, eight, two said I'm running iOS 17.4.1 on my iPhone 12 pro max. Everything seems fine. My AirPods pro sporadic pairing issues have been resolved. Battery health is good. Battery life is also good. No connectivity issues, no dropped calls. Browsing is very smooth and apps open and close smoothly without latency. Bantler 26 said really good so far. 17.4 was atrocious, full of visual bugs and stuttering, not to mention the battery life. So far the experience with 17.4.1 in one word, I'm pleased. Battery is now pretty good, fast and snappy. No more double tap on apps to open them. Connectivity is a little bit more stable. Not had tremendous problems with 17.4 though, like other people. Keyboard feels somewhat better now. Oh, and my favorite, YouTube got fi fixed finally. Text disappearing while changing the theme from light to dark mode, plus freezing. King Kiro said, iPhone 14 Pro Max, iOS 17.4.1. Not overheating so far, like with the previous version, smooth and snappy overall really good. So that's everything with iOS 17.4.1. Hopefully we see Mac OS 14.4.1 along with watch OS 10.4.1 and the TV OS and HomePod OS updates as well this week, if there are major security updates. So we could see that. And of course the overall experience with iOS 17.4.1, hopefully will continue to get better and better and improve after everything's done processing in the background. I'd love to hear from you as far as what you your experience is in the comments below with iOS 17.4.1. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do.
If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.